The following is a presentation from PokerStars.com. This week on The Big Game. After Bill Perkins ruffled the poker brat's feathers early. Unreal. My time's coming, though. Don't taunt me. David Williams joined the fray last night. He's on a train. He's speeding he's down the hill right now. He's... And Phil Locke wanted some action, too. Put it in after all. Come on, it's just money. We, we both have endless chunks of it. Just put it in. Meanwhile, David Fishman hopes his time won't run out. Still got a lot of hands left. As the loose cannon chases Nadia's magic number. I'm hoping much higher than that, though, would be the new benchmark. Yeah, you could do it. Tonight, see if the fish sinks or swims as the big game continues now. I feel like the game's going to get a little out of control. Welcome once again to the big game from Las Vegas. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Chris Rose, as the fireworks continue in our state-of-the-art poker room, where right now there's three quarters of a million dollars in cash on the table. Joe Cata continues to pay dearly for running like God in the 09 main event. Folding winners and showing down losers has cost him 79-9. Phil Locke is just two weeks removed from an ATV accident. Cast on his arm, broken rib, bad eye, but he's still plugging away. When there's trouble, you call DW, and David Williams is in a little bit now. At the moment, he's down 21,800. The top profiteer this week is amateur Bill Perkins, a commodities trader from Houston. His crazy play and zany table talks caught everybody off guard. 35-year-old David Fishman is tonight's loose cannon. He teaches math at Arizona State University and is the father of twins, Sammy and Jesse. This man loves math so much, even his children are squared. He's currently got himself a profit of 33-5. And the final player is Phil Helmuth, who's been mixing it up with everybody. Through it all, the poker brat has a profit of over 23K. Right now, he's with Amanda Leatherman. Phil, it seems like David Williams and Phil Locke are trying to get under your skin a little bit this week. Do you have a plan for him? I definitely have a plan for him. I'm not sure they are trying to get under my skin, but I, I definitely have a plan. I, I know exactly how to beat David Williams, and I know how to beat Phil Locke. And, tell you know, me, tell just, me, tell me. Well, I mean, I just, against David Williams, I just have to be able to beat Top Parent. and he'll give me thirty, forty, fifty thousand $50,000, and I just haven't been able to do it. So I really haven't made a lot of big hands where I could get paid off to this point. But I have 60 more hands. We'll see what happens. All right, get them. All right. Once again, the loose cannon's been staked a hundred grand to play, keeps all money above the initial hundred thousand. And the loose cannon, who's won the most money at season's end, earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth fifty thousand. Nadia Magnus leads all loose cannons for that passport at sixty-three thousand six hundred. So I guess you could say the math teacher will be looking for a profit of greater than X. We are going to play 150 hands this week. This is number ninety-three. Action begins on Helmuth, who raises with Queen Jack. Jack eight. For Fish, who folds, Bill Perkins, very active this week, is going to sit out, as does David Williams. Queen 7 for Phil Locke, he folds, and pocket kings for Cata. Likely to see a 3-bet. Pop. Re-raises to 6,800. Cat has been pretty quiet so far this week. His image will be rockier than Phil Locke's ATV landings. <laughs> and Helmuth folds. I probably should have called you. you I forgot you. Like probably to... not. <laughs> well, here are the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Blinds are two and four hundred with a hundred dollar ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least a hundred grand, but can reload for up to five hundred thousand dollars. It almost seems like there's a rule that if Joe Cata has a big hand, he can't make any money with it. It's been a rough go for him. Boys, can you feel the electricity in the air? I'm stuck less than 10K. He was stuck almost 60K at one point this week. Jack 10 suited for Fishman. He says it's his favorite hand. Limps, Perkins calls. Williams I'm looking too. looking at you. You did the thing. You limped him. You did the thing? Is it a family? Yeah. Family. Woohoo! These guys are about to flop six ways to Sunday. Check. Deuce, eight, ten, two hearts. Goes check, check to the cannon. Who bets? God, I'm so sick of you leading out. This time, Fishman's leading out with top pair. And Perkins isn't one to fold a pair on the flop, which he has. Oh, 
Perkins calls with middle pair. Williams folds, so does Locke and Joe. Raise 10,000. Helmuth's check raise shows just how strong a pair in a flush draw can be. You can see it's got big equity, even three-handed. And now to Fishman, who calls. He believes in his top pair on this wet board. How much you got left? About 110. How much do you have? Um, ten, about 100 something. Nobody's scared. <laughs> Nobody's scared. He folds. <laughs> They're not scared. They're like, oh, yeah, go ahead, do it. Deuces spades on the turn. Trip deuces for Helmuth. This is what I like to call the raptor attack, where Phil Helmuth hits the out you didn't even know was there. Bets 25 grand. Other than bet size, it will be very difficult for Fishman to know he's beat, and Phil's done a good job of polarizing his range to huge hands or a bluff. I'm like 51% that I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Actually, it's like 94 that you don't. <laughs> you have a percentage in mind? 6%. <laughs> the brim went a little lower. Look at the amateur having fun with his sickening decisions. I mentioned it up. I just keep feeling stronger and stronger that I got you, Phil. I feel like I just want to push. Pushing would be very bad. We haven't seen this loose cannon go crazy with just one pair yet, but we all lose our minds sometimes. If he did push, he'd be drawing very slim, but not dead. So, so tempted. So want to push. I so, so want to push. Folds. Folded, Phil Helmuth. <clears throat> Time to show that hand. It would be quite exciting. We'd all really enjoy it. Come on, Phil, show it. It's good for the game. All right, fine. I was so close it's to pushing. Just the way your money is, whatever. I was so, so close to pushing. So, so close to pushing. Nice bet, Phil. Thanks. I had to read, though, right? What he means to say is nice lay down, kid. This week, Phil has been very aggressive pre flop, leading the table in both three bet and pre flop raising percentages. His most profitable move has been to end pots early because when he does, Phil's doing it to the tune of over $222,000. And the poker brat is now up almost 39 grand overall. Bill Perkins has straddled, so David Williams under the gun with tens. Pocket tens is usually a raise. Nope, just limps. Lock folds, ace king for Kata, on the button. That raises the pot. Raises to 4,400. Helmuth folds. Fishman, out. Would you have called me if I'd pushed? I don't know. <laughs> well, that means that I had to beat, that's for sure. I was right about that. Wow. If he's not bull you, that's the thing. He might know very well what he would have done. Yeah, that's true, too. That's true, too. Nice one, Locke. The straddler folds. Now Williams. He calls. Kata hasn't been getting out of line much. Helmuth's up like 30 dimes again, boys. We got to chisel him back down. You know, this isn't a team sport. You don't have to gang up on the guy. <laughs> Ace Jack four in the flop, top pair for Kata. Action on DW. Who checks? David called a pre flop raise, so Kata may feel like he can get some value here on the flop. Kata, C bets, 6,800. Personally, Kata's been playing so tight, I'd be pretty knotted up after a raise and a second barrel from him. Though I guess a check might look even more suspicious. Williams, not a believer, calls. Five of spades on the turn. Williams checks again. That five isn't likely too scary to Kata since D-Dub probably wasn't limp calling pre-flop with deuce three. But Williams is playing almost suspiciously passively. Kata fires 13,000. Kata looks like he's still betting for value right around half the pot. Williams is counting out chips. If he doesn't fold here, I can only assume he's putting Kata on a three-barrel bluff or he's floating to try to take it away on the river. There's the call. David's in bad shape. The river gives Kata two pair. 
Kata's hand improved, and also a couple of other potential hands improved as well, which makes this board even worse for David Williams. Williams checks. Queen 10 and Kings are two of the hands that just got there. David probably would play those differently, so Kata might be confident even still. He's been checked to on three streets. Kata fires 27-7. Cat is giving Williams three to one on his money, but based on how few hands Cat has played and the line he's taken in this hand, I just don't think David ever has the winning hand enough to make this call. He hasn't folded yet. Even if David makes a play, I don't think he can get Cat to fold. Williams calls. Kata shows big slick, and Williams not feeling so slick after that latest donation. I don't know what Williams was thinking. On which street? David with a bad misread there as Joe Kata takes down the first six-figure pot of the week. Kata's reloaded twice, and now he's finally crawling back to even. The big game is just heating up. More from Las Vegas coming your way after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where Joe Cata just got paid off with big slick against David Williams in that last hand. The 09 world champion told us how he got maximum value from such a premium hand as we go behind the poker face. At this point, I was stuck, I think, about 80,000 and freaking straddled under the gun. And David limped in under the gun for 800, and I was on the bottom with Ace King. I raised the pot. I made it pot, which was about 4,400 around there, and folded back around David, and he called. Flop came ace jack four, which is a great flop in my hand, obviously. He checks, and I know I bet around two thirds pot, and David opted to call. And at this point, I started thinking about his hand range and what he can have. If he can have a jack in his range, he could have any ace at this point. If the turn comes uh, five, and he checks again to me. I have to continue to bet if I want to bluff there and how big his range is for calling me where I'm actually ahead so I decided about the turn 13,000 and David called and River bought a king and he checked again and at that point I beat any two pair of hands now so if he does have two pair I'm ahead and the only hand that I am beat by is fours so he can't have fives because he wouldn't call me on the flop so it was an obvious bet on the river and I bet 27,000 I was thankfully called I'm not sure what he had I think David ended up calling me for several reasons. At that point, he knows I'm willing to bluff all three streets if necessary, and to him, I was obviously representing a big hand pre-flop, and he knows I could have been either doing that with the steal on the button and trying to continue to represent a big hand, so that's my why he call. Just my image alone makes it easy enough for David to call there. David Williams called the whole way down with 210, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt and say maybe it was a misclick. <laughs> Well, let's see if Williams can get back on track or if Kata can keep it going. Action folds over to Kata, who's out. Helmuth raises. King, queen for Fishman. I don't win very many pots from this spot, so it's been a fit of discipline. Wow. Fishman calls. Perkins is out. Williams. An absolute fit. Calls. David Williams in real bad shape with a real loose defend. Maybe a little tilty from that last hand. Deuce, jack, ace, two clubs. Action flop. This looks like a fun board. Williams checks bottom pair. Helmuth checks top pair. Fishman leads out with a semi bluff. Williams folds. Helmuth raises. This is a pretty easy call with a flush draw, gut shot, and two big cards. And there it is by Fishman. Five of hearts on the turn gives Helmuth two pair. He bets 15 grand. We know Fishman isn't getting great immediate odds since his pairs are still no good, but PH could be doing this with worse flush draws, and he's got enough behind for decent implied odds. Add it all up, and Fishman makes the call. He's looking for a club or a 10. The river, there's the 10 completing the straight. Fishman swims the upstream battle and runs down the great one. Action on Helmuth. 23,600. Bets 23,6. 23,600 to a $45,000 pot. This is pretty dirty. Fishman's reverse peddling the nuts. 
clearly he's going to raise. The only question is how much and can he get Phil to call? I'm not going to let you do this to me again, Phil. I can't let you do this to me again. Leonardo DiCaprio could not be selling this any better. How much you got behind? Was there an answer to that? <laughs> like 85 or something. <laughs> uh, I'm all in. Fishman shoves. He even fake hesitated. Watch that Oscar, I'm Leo. I'm done. I'm done, Phil. I see method acting, improv, pantomime. If Phil calls here, the kid stays in the picture. This is so sick. I mean, I just, I just, do I just, is it possible that I just get cooled every hand I play here? You got king, queen of clubs? I mean, I guess so. Phil's put him on his exact hand, but if he does make this call, the loose cannon will have a profit of more than 140,000 and will be poised to take down that NAPT passport. God, all that talking leads me to believe this. Wow. Now that might be real. I'd certainly be shaking either way. All right, I call. Helmuth calls and sees King Queen of Clubs. Bingo! See, see, if a club comes, I don't lose one nickel in the sand. What a pot for Fishman. I mean, 10, three, 9, three, 8, three, 7, three, 6. Three, can I even play in this game? I mean, what the f they find? Oh, I mean, what the f I mean, how can I even f play in this game? It's like I just get f cheated. I mean, hand after hand after hand. Don't blame Blaine the dealer. We all know it's the seat that's unlucky. Give the amateur an offsuit f 10. I don't lose one nickel if he hits a club. It's just unreal. Where are these cards coming from? David Fishman with 53 hands left has a six figure profit and he can taste that NAPT passport. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? I would have called him quicker, except he, he talked so much that I thought he was super strong. But I know he can't move in with Ace 10. That was a great read, by the way. You had him. Yeah, was... You're a real classy guy, buddy. A... You are. Who? Him? You. Why? What did I do? Why would you say that? I mean, why would you, why would you, I mean, what are you trying to do? You, the guy hits a miracle 10 on me and what, you want to just step He's on me? He's a school me? teacher and you and him have endless trunks of money. <laughs> endless trunks of money. He's a school teacher. For God's sakes, man. Screaming will do you a lot of good. Oh my God. I don't want to die. A lot of goof at Potentially a life changing hand for David Fishman. We're coming back. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the big game. Well, David Fishman just took a big step forward towards claiming that NAPT passport and now leads Nadia Magnus by more than 76 grand. I can't really imagine David giving up this lead like earlier in the week, but then again, stranger things have happened. There are 52 hands to go. You playing the main event next year? <laughs> Am I? Am I? Can we, get, can we have Jason Mercier in the green room come? Because he's not going to play him anyways. I'd say the cannon is pretty likely to tighten up here. Count up the number of dollars spent if you if you walk away. You know what's gonna happen? Yeah. He's gonna get two aces and not be able to fold. I don't even make sense to look at my cards. You're gonna you're gonna pick up two aces and not be able to fold them and get cracked. I don't want to ruin the TV stuff. I don't even think I'm gonna look at my cards. <laughs> He's definitely getting cracked. No, you gotta look at your cards because if you pick up aces and fold, they want to tear you one upstairs. Oh, that's cool. I'll do that. I'd be happy to pick up aces and fold. By the way, you just set pedal, bro. If you get aces, you just set pedal. If you folded aces, I wouldn't blame you. Ace queen for lock. Set pedaling is only playing sets or better. Lock raises. Ace king for Kata. Could get interesting. I don't know how you got on the call. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, 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 he get the clue. The clue for me to fold is when he was talking so much. I'm not going to do it again. No, he's playing Monday morning quarterback on himself. <laughs> oh, Kata repops to six thousand. 
Cata knows that Phil Locke's range is pretty wide from small to big. It'll cost Locke another 4,200 to play. Now that you're calmed down, can I tell you why I was mad at you? Yes. Because you started, you started insulting my play right after the hand ended. You said something about, oh, you knew you had it, you called anyway. No, that's just I, really I didn't bad say, I wasn't to talking that. to you, I was talking Only to Only Tony G does stuff like that, and even, we don't even respect him that much for that. You gotta admit, you do respect him a little for it, though. Oh, yeah. Now, since Phil knows, Joe knows how wide his range is, he could put Joe on a lot worse than Ace-King to make this move, which is why it's a very decent value bet. There's the lock call. Joe Cat has got him right where he wants him. 10-5-9 on the flop, two spades. Cat is still ahead. Lock checks over to him. Lock's checking to the three better. Cata probably wants to maintain the lead. He does, firing 7,400. Cata knows his ace king is ahead of a decent part of Lock's range, and Lock knows there's a chance Joe could be C betting with worse. I fold. Lock folds. Cata shows. And scoops up a nice pot. You think you need a repot, huh? I put you on a pair or ace king, so I'm trying to hit a queen or an ace. Ace so I can lose a bunch of money, or a queen so I can <laughs> run you out. <laughs> Akata was the winner there, but it's David Fishman who's still on cloud nine, which is understandable for a guy whose biggest win before this week was $420. But not all the loose cannons have been as fortunate, Joe. This is the most profit that any of the loose cannons have had in front of them at any point in the game. Nadia Magnus and Ernest Wiggins took home a portion of those winnings, while Russ Harlow and Elizabeth Houston left Vegas empty-handed. You can see the risk involved for the LCs, so we'll see how Fishman plays things from here on out. If the LC folds every hand the rest of the way, David Fishman will still take home 130 grand. Wow. This, this is this is three years' salary for me right here. <laughs> me too. Come on, boys, let's go. You know, teachers aren't underpaid here on the big game. <laughs> <sighs> and Bill Perkins just made that much while he sighed. <laughs> Perkins calls. I got 11,000 left. You have what? About 11,000. Left? Yeah, I saw you looking. Williams limps. Very surprising. Locks out. Cat of two. Helmuth. Checks. With Perkins range, I'm not sure how I feel about just calling with ace 10. It's not exactly a trap hand. 7 8 Jack. Helmuth checks his gut shot. Perkins checks bottom pair, and Williams checks. Ace of hearts on the turn. This card might be big trub for D-Dub. What's out there? That's 3,000. Min raise. Perkins raises with two pair. Not 6,000, but min raise. Min raise. Perkins has min raised Helmuth <sighs> several times, and every time he's eaten Helmuth's lunch. Now Williams with top pair and a gut shot. He shoves. Helmuth folds. Looks like Williams' lunch could be in jeopardy here, but he does have some decent equity with his gut shot and chop outs. Your call, what would you like me to do? Would you like me to do something? Do you have a preference? What do you have? Reasonable, something reasonable. Should be an easy call with two pair. I think you should put it in and run it a few times. Call. Perkins calls. You want to run it three times? Three times? Yeah, that way somebody can get a majority. Two, two times and they might chop. What about five times? Let's do it. Five times? Give him five it. times. I want five times. Give the man I said wants. three. He suggested five. I said, let's do I it. Love 18 five times. Do you want 18 five times? times. <laughs> five times. They're running it five times. Five times. Five times. The first. Boom, number one. Perkins wins. That's full house. That happens to be full boatish. That's one. Full boaty. Playing for just over 10 and a half grand each run. The second. Jack of clubs. That's, that's you. That's the chop. So now you're glad you made it five we're times. Just stop it now. No. <laughs> that was a good move. Yeah. Just checking. The third run goes to Perkins. Oh, no, Full boat. <laughs> How about three times? Can we stop it now? <laughs> NBA playoff series don't well, last this long. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna get that card anymore. I don't think. The fourth. Perkins. That's yeah, me. That's Fifth and final run goes to David Williams. Wow. <laughs> so you get three fifths. So make five pots and three go to. I want my insurance. I'd rather just have the insurance. Damn it. 
Trust me, no one wishes they had insurance more than Phil Locke. So David Williams will be sticking around a Still little wins. longer Still while the man in black tries to escape that dark cloud that lingers over him. See if you can shake it when we come back. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where David Fishman is now the favorite for that NAPT passport as this season's top earning loose cannon. He is standing by with Amanda. David, you are up $140,000. What's going through your head? <laughs> no, it's like everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. This is beyond, way, way, way beyond expectation. This is outstanding. <laughs> Describe what was going through your mind when that tin hit the river. Well, I knew I had the nuts. Yeah. So I was just trying to find a way I could get Phil in there with me. Uh, apparently, I almost blew it for myself. I overacted a little bit too much, but uh, at the end, he came along. You know, I was actually sitting over here, and I saw you shaking. Yeah. Was that real? No. That was fake? Yeah. Wow, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations. Get back out. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, Phil Helmuth is shaken and stirred. He's down to just 8,100 bucks. Entering this week, Helmuth was down about 287 grand on the big game, and it looked like he turned the corner with a profit of 102K after 43 hands. It's been all downhill from there, as the poker brat now has just 8,100 in front of him. And I guess he couldn't remember his pin. <laughs> Perkins straddles, action on Williams, who folds. Lock. Out. Kata, see ya. Helmuth, ace queen. Raises to 3,200. That's more than a third of his stack. Correct, David. <laughs> Correct. Is anybody else in the hand? Just you and me, baby. What would you like me to do? I'd like you to move all in. How much do you have left? I'd like you to call. <laughs> Phil only has 4,900 left. You ask for it, you get it, Phil. He's over there. That Perkins guy's nice. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Perkins always outflops him anyway. I like you to move all in. The flop, seven nine six top pair again for Perkins against Helmuth. <laughs> As I was saying, <laughs> Helmuth checks. Uh, I'm gonna bet. How much would you like me to bet? If you're gonna bet, you might as well bet forty nine hundred. That's what I have left. Forty nine hundred. So there's the bet, 4,900 by Perkins. All right. Phil calls. Good game. Phil sees that he does have some outs. If he hits an ace or queen, he doesn't want it to be a club, that's for sure. I'll, you you want to give you want to make some insurance? No, I'm not. This is a, this pot's like four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> if you felt him, it's good because he reloads fat or Jason comes with a fat stack. That's what we want is a real amount of money, not a dribbly dibbly thing, you know? All right, roll it. The turn, deuce of clubs. Uh-oh. Wow, He's four low. outs I have. Time to have the driver warm up the rolls. He's gonna pull a school teacher on me. The river's a six. I survive. Good game, man. Nice to see you, Joe. I want to do the best. Phil, nice to see you, man. That's it for Phil. <sighs> David. Nice to see you, bro. It's good playing with you. I'm gonna give you the hug. Good game, man. Give me a hug. I'm no, sorry. Please, please, please. Come on, man. <laughs> Awkward. Good game. Here, uh, shake your hand. Gladly. Oh, you shake my hand. Good game, man. I don't have cooties. Good yeah. game. Nice playing. Good game, bro. Thanks. Nice pot, bro. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, very well, very well played. You played really good too. Thanks, I appreciate it. Good luck. Well, Thank if you. you're gonna hit the road, it might as well be the high road. W P P H. In the meantime, his nemesis, Bill Perkins, is now up 72 and change, but the story continues to be David Fishman, who after doubling through Helmuth, sits on a profit of over 138 grand. The loose cannon is in great position for the passport with more than double the amount of Nadia Magnus. I don't expect Fishman to get involved again without the stone cold nuts. For all intents and purposes, yeah, you guys are playing for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what, there's no- You haven't folded anything good yet? No, not. I had my best answer. Are you happy that you're not folding anything good? Doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters. Smart man. <laughs> Can't accuse the man of being greedy. Ace eight for Locke. But the best thing I have so far is ace eight offsuit. Huh? <laughs> Locke raises. Catafolds. Fishman throws away his favorite hand. Who raised? I think he's got a new guy, favorite huh? hand now. Anyway. My friend. Perkins calls. Williams, two. So three to the flop. 
Trey King for all spades. The LC would have flopped a flush, but he can laugh it off. Check. Perkins checks. Williams checks. Lock. Bet's 3,300 with just ace high. Lock's taking a stab in position. Perkins calls with top pair, and Williams folds. Nine of hearts on the turn. Check. Perkins checks. Lock's missed pretty hard. He should realize how useless it is to try to take Bill Perkins off a pair or a draw. Lock checks. Ten of clubs on the river. Perkins may feel like it's safe to bet now. 2,500. He does, firing 2,500. So sick. Lock shows the ace. And folds. Oh, well. That time I folded the monster. Jack 10 spades. You'd have busted me. Yeah. I wouldn't have believed you. Yeah. See, the thing is, before I, before I came here tonight, my favorite hand was Jack 10 suited. I would play it every time, but now my favorite hand's King Queen suited, without a doubt. The fish <laughs> appears content swimming in his new tax bracket. See if he continues to avoid temptation after this. Welcome back to the big game from Las Vegas, where Phil Hellmuth's seat has been taken by Jason Mercier. This rising star from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has already built himself a nice resume that includes a World Series of Poker bracelet and five million in tournament winnings. Hence the term running like Jason Mercier. He's bought in tonight for a quarter mil. So who's winning, who's losing, what's the hell's going on? Loose cannon and businessmen are the ones that are up. The four professional poker players are down. Or out. The loose cannon's up nearly a buck forty. Says he's going to fold every hand the rest of the match. Let's see if he changes his tune if he starts picking up monsters. Action starts on David Williams. He folds. Lock. Sixes. Raises to 2,000. Kata. Out. Mercier. Pocket pair. Even though there's only 40 hands to go, Mercier bought in for a quarter mil to make sure he can cover the biggest stack at the table. He calls. Aces for the cannon. <laughs> uh, still aces. You can't make this stuff up. Whoa. Let's see if he makes the raise. He's thinking of set pedaling, boys. <laughs> nice call, Locke. He's thinking. Throws him away. What? What was that one? It's over. Action's over. Two to the flop. Six kings, six quads for Locke. I can't believe it, Vance. <laughs> David Fishman folds aces, would have been outflopped by quads. If this happened in a movie, I would say it's too unrealistic. Lock bets 3,300. Welcome to the game, Jason Mercier. Who quickly calls. That flop will look pretty innocuous to Mercier. The turn, jack of spades. Lock checks. Lock's checking for deception. There's a chance the paint may give Jason more of a reason to get away from this on the river. Mercier checks. Deuce on the river. Locke's trying to decide how big a value bet Jason will call. Ten thousand four hundred. Not quite an overbet, but a big bet. He's giving Jason the chance to put him on a bluff. Mercier calls. Aya. That's a sigh of relief. Oh, well. I almost raised. Just kidding. Fishman puts his head down so he can let all the bullets fly by. It would be wrong to bet the turn, and I could go for a little check call on the turn. A lock's win has now put him in Profitville. Yeah, on the turn, I knew I had a good hand, too. That's why I lay down pocket jacks. Did you really or no? What was it? Wouldn't necessarily pocket be aces. No. Was it really? You had aces free flop? <laughs> no way. I'd love to he see that. He didn't think forever and had this weird look. <laughs> it's like, what? Sorry. It's the first time he's tanked. That's the first time really? They, they can't make fun of me now for laying down pocket you, aces. You would, flop. Yeah, if he's lying, he'll look like a liar when we see it on TV. And we'll know. And everybody watching, well, this guy is making stuff up. I mean, he's never tanked on a hand. He's just been folding before it gets to him. This one, he sat there and had this weird look and didn't know what to do. I, I told, I told uh, Daniel the other day that I was a poker history teacher, and he actually believed me for like half a second. The history of poker. <laughs> the ancient Sumerians. Doyle's got some amazing stories about Sumeria. <laughs> Lock folds. Cat is out. 
Mercier with queen eight, raises. Fishman folds. I'm going to say it before he does it every time. If he folded aces, what else is he going to play? <laughs> Perkins is out. I feel like playing one more hand, though, tonight. I think I might play one more hand. After that, dodging that bullet makes me think I should play one more hand. You don't quit poker. Poker quits you. The problem is, when he plays a hand, we're going to know it's super premium joyous. Williams calls. The super premium joy range is pretty narrow. Two to the flop. Five, nine, six, two diamonds. Both have a gut shot. Both are blocking each other's outs. Williams checks. Mercier bets. Bill Perkins, can you break that pretty please? Yes, I can. Hey, it's Mr. Don Supreme Donkey or... Supreme Donkey or the businessman. Oh, the businessman to you. <laughs> I do love the businessman as a nickname. The businessman. It's so retarded and long to say. <laughs> Williams calls. Six on the turn. Williams checks. No help to either player. Jason's queen high is still the best hand. Mercier checks. Seven of hearts completes Mercier's straight. 80, 90. Holy cow! Oh my lord! Amanda! Get Amanda! Williams checks. <laughs> Amanda, I'm up 5,000 or something. That'll go towards my orbital fracture surgery in the morning. I wonder how many people pay for surgery in cash. <laughs> wow, I feel super alive, boys. Mercy or bets. And I would like to interject very quickly that before my accident, a month before the accident, I played racquetball for six hours in a row. Williams calls. No lie, six hours, I didn't stop. And Mercier wins a pot of 25 grand. Phil Locke's got so much energy, he even outlasted the wall. <laughs> well, with only 9,600 left, David's short stack is getting shorter and shorter. See if Williams can hang on to it, or will he pull a Hellmuth and exit stage left? Find out after this. Welcome back to the big game where David Fishman continues to protect his lead over Nadia Magnus for that NAPT passport. The NAPT passport covers buy-ins and expenses for a series of NAPT events. Did I raise him at some point? I don't even remember anymore. How come you guys remember my hand better than I remember my hand? Dude, that was an epic story. <laughs> I don't know, now I gotta remember, I gotta go back and watch the rest of the hands so I can remember, so I can tell the whole story. I don't remember the whole story, shoot. Fishman folds. What the heck was the whole story? There's no, it was an epic, epic story. Perkins raises. There's a race preflop, I just called it. Race. Williams re-pops. I think DW is looking to get it all in here. Lock folds. Kata folds. Mercer's uh, out. I bet the pot. Perkins re-raises, and Williams snap calls. How big's your hand? Pair of sevens. All right, well, we know David Fishman folded a seven, but Williams and Perkins don't know that. What am I, 54-46? He took Fishman's math class at ASU. He somehow got the numbers right, but they're backwards with the seven out. The flop. Williams hits top pair. I'm dead. It's over. How many times you want? It's up to you. Twice. Give me three. All right. Three. You guys are running three times now? <laughs> That's pretty unusual. All right, three times from here. The first turn, ace of clubs. That's not me. The first river, the eight of diamonds. Williams wins. Very close. Well, David won't go broke on this hand. There's only two sevens left. I said. <laughs> Actually, only one, because Fishman folded the seven of spades. The second turn, the jack gives Williams two pair. <laughs> Keep it in there, baby. You know what I'm doing. The river, four of spades. Williams wins again. Perkins looking for the miracle seven. Watch it. Watch there be like seven seven in the muck and the burn. I think I don't think I have a shot, dude. I, I just don't. You have two sevens. No, just one. There's one. Bing. Four of diamonds on the turn. The third river, the three of clubs. Ninety-five hundred. It's a sweep for Williams. Perkins couldn't hit the seven from heaven. Williams survives, and now he's up to 24-2. It's punishing me for my insolence later. Earlier I had all these sentences where you trail off. <laughs> <laughs> David stacking chips, but he's still in an awfully deep hole, Joe. Williams has been calling a very high number of raises pre-flop, and when he's not calling the raises, he's three betting 12% of the time. David's staying committed to pots with marginal hands in dicey spots, and that's probably the main reason why he's down over 75,000 right now. Williams in the big blind this hand. 
Bill Perkins, he wants to gamble, and you're locking it up, and he doesn't like that. Bill wants to gamble, right? Bill, I want to gamble. Gambling's fun. That's why I flew here. Why do you think I sat in the green room for, for four days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Locke will not gamble this hand. Cat is out. And the NAPT could still be, it could be worth a lot more than 50 grand, too, if you just, just got to cash in one of them. Fishman with kings. <laughs> I mean, he folded aces. He's thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to see one flop. How about that? You let me see a flop, I'll see a flop. Hey, limps in. You're not going to let me see a flop? Perkins raised. Ace queen for Dave. You can still see a flop. I raised the pot. Raise the pot. Williams re pops. Fishman limped. If he wanted a cheap flop, he would have been better off raising. A true poker player would not be able to resist re potting this. <laughs> he didn't want to, but he folds. Why are you always picking on me? It's probably right for you to limp with super big hands and then re you know what I'm saying? Just because against a short stack. I didn't come here to, to just fold. You didn't come here to just fold. All right, fine. Perkins calls. You can really see how much this six-figure profit means to the loose cannon. So only two to the flop of seven queen deuce. I think you're going to bet. I, I know you're going to bet. I don't know if I should just bet to bet. Check bet, check raise, <laughs> check call. I'll check. Perkins check. William shoves. He's got top pair. That sounds like the bat signal. Perkins folds. I had you that time, David. I would have had you that with, time. With what? I had kings. What? I did. Wow. You're so baloney. I'm catching all the great stuff now. Come on. Are you, are you I, I don't know you yet. These guys know you. They've been playing with you yes. for a week. So yes. Like, are you legit or no? He's legit. <laughs> he is legit, but he is not too legit to quit. <laughs> That's on the B side, I think. Joe, what do you think of David Fishman so far? Fishman's profit in four nights is more than the other loose cannons combined. Barring him getting blind versus blind, cold deck straight flush over quads, I don't see how he doesn't walk away with the NAPT passport. All right, guys, that's it for the night. David, you're up over $130,000. Your mind must be racing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you seem determined to hold on to it. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna hold on to it. Now. Yeah? You gonna play any hands? You nervous? I, I played one hand there. Yeah? I, I lived in. You're back in it. You're back in it. <laughs> David, we kept you around. Yeah, you know. You're a short stack ninja. Just keep getting it in there. I wish it was no limit preflop. This pot limit is really cramping my short stack play. Right. All right, we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> night, David. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying it's goodbye so for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. For Joe Stapleton, I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you tomorrow night. Next time on The Big Game, after securing a profit beyond expectation. I'm all in. All right, I call. Will David Fishman be satisfied? I'll be the fish the rest of the night. But you're not a fish, that's the problem. <laughs> or will the poker gods continue to tempt him? I feel like playing one more hand though tonight. Find out who dominates this game. Sorry, buddy. And see how Daniel could change things forever. If you want to make it seven-handed for a sucker, let me know. It all happens tomorrow night on The Big Game. I want to play a hand, I'm itching. The preceding was a presentation from PokerStars.com.